Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. This is the first in a series of videos to get you up and running fast with On One Photo Raw. On One Photo Raw is both an asset manager and a post processor for your digital photos. It's got a ton of features, it's really, really fast, and I want you to be able to get up and running with it quickly. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the browse module where you manage, sort, and do all of your asset management with your photos. This is the browse interface. Let's do a quick tour. On the left-hand side, you've got access to all the folders that have your images in them. You can create albums for collections of your images. You can run and create filters to fine-tune searches for photos. If you're a tethered shooter, you can do tethered shooting and have the photos from your camera come directly into browse. And there's also a history of places you've visited recently. In the center, we've got, of course, a preview of all the different photos that are in the selected folder. And on the right-hand side, we have some metadata about any selected photos. You select a photo, you get information about that photo. Along the bottom, we have different views for our photos. We have controls for the thumbnail size. You can sorting options. If you have subfolders, you can show all the contents there. And this raw previews, I wanna talk about that for a moment. You have two choices, fast or accurate. Fast will use the embedded JPEG that's in a raw file to quickly show you a preview at uh, you know a low but reasonable resolution so you can gauge whether or not the photo is something you want to keep or work on. And the other choice is accurate, where Photo Raw will go and read the raw file, generate a preview for you, and present that. That takes a little bit more time. So depending on what your workflow calls for, you can work in fast preview modes to do a very quick culling of your photos. And once you've got those sorted out, you can flip over to accurate so you can have a more detailed look at your preview. And to round out the browse interface, on the very right hand edge we've access to other modules and multi-frame merging options for panoramas, HDRs, and focus stacking. Down at the bottom we can resize photos, share them to social media, or export them to our computer as JPEGs, TIFFs, for you know, other uses, email, social shares with family. Let's take a little closer look at some of these items in the left-hand side. In the folders area, we have catalog folders, local drives, and cloud storage. Now, catalog folders, these are for your favorite collections. It's possible to put your entire library in there if you like to, but what catalog folders do is on one will look at those folders, monitor them in the background, and make sure you've got good previews, they're cached, and you can run specialized searches and create specialized albums on catalog folders. We'll come back to that in a minute. Local drives are what you would expect, the things that are attached to your computer. That's the hard disk that's inside your computer, any external storage. If you have a memory card reader or your camera's attached to your system, you'll see that those drives will show up under the local drives. And then cloud storage, if you are storing photos in the cloud with Dropbox, with Microsoft OneDrive, with Google Drive, those are things you can configure on one to know about and be able to access your cloud-based images too. In the albums area, we have two types of albums. We have standard albums like this one here with the three stacked image, and we have smart albums that are based on metadata. So you can craft different types of albums using metadata, date ranges, a whole variety of different attributes about the photo. Now, the smart albums only work with catalog folders. So that's where your catalog folders come into play for creating metadata-based, rule-based albums. We also have filters, and those can apply to any folder. If I go into this folder here, show these photos, I can enable the filters and say only show me the five stars that are in here, or maybe just the four star ones. Or I can search by date ranges. I can search in the advanced area for those same criteria that we saw before. And I have the choice to match anything or match everything. So these filters become very powerful very quickly. And you can use that just in any folder of images you're browsing to narrow down and find the photos that you're most interested in that point in time. Let's take a look at the views that we have in Photo Raw. Down in the lower left, we have the grid view, which is what we've been looking at all along. We can also look at a you know, full view of our photo. 
we have the film strip, which lets you scrub left to right through your folder of photos and selecting any one of them gives you a large scale preview. The other view that's very interesting is the compare view, which is this one here. We need to have more than one photo selected. So I'm going to command or control click to select two photos. And then I can look at both of these side by side. If I use lock, pan, and zoom. That means as I zoom in and I move around, I'll have both photos moving in the same direction, the same area of the photo becomes the focus point of this window. And I can compare very closely. Do I like the water spilling on this rock more than this rock? You could check for focus. You can check for a variety of things very close up in this compare view and figure out which photo is the best one of a set. When you begin looking at a screen like this, the interface may start to feel a little cluttered. But on that toolbar on the bottom, on the left-hand side, we have show and hide the left pane. I can click that and hide it. I also have the same thing on the right side. So if you don't need to be seeing the left-hand panel for your folders or filters, or you don't need to see metadata for a photo, you can quickly get those out of the way. There's also a keyboard shortcut. The tab key will make both sides hide and display with a single keystroke. One more interesting feature about Browse is that you can apply styles directly in Browse. Notice on the far left we also have a Presets tab. and We have a whole bunch of different presets that come with On1. There are other packs that you can buy from photographers and install them yourselves. We can go into any one of these and quickly choose one of the presets and have that applied to our photo directly in Browse. So you don't necessarily even have to go into the edit module. If there's a look for a photo that you want, it's available in Browse and you can apply it right away. If you'd like to try out multiple looks on your photo, you can create a version. If I right click on the photo and choose Create Version, I get a, another version of my photo. This hasn't made another copy of the raw file. It's just given me another instance to play with a different look. So I could apply a different type of style or look to this with a preset, try them out, and see which one I like the most. So that is the tour of the Browse module. It's where you manage photos, create albums of them, apply metadata, and if you're inclined, apply a style to it as well. If you want to go deeper into the post-processing, that's where we'll turn to the edit module, and that will be the next video in this series.